DJ, why do you hate Mac Jones so much? Uh, I don't. I mean, as I said there, and tell you what, I've had my tweets read back to me, and they've sounded far worse than those did right there. I think that there's some nuance in there, and you said it off the top, Trenny, that simultaneously a player can be overrated and still a good thing for your team, still potentially a good player. My thing, and Kern and I have gotten uh, into it over this before, is I just want to wait and see a little more than some other people do. And if you already think that Mac Jones is really good, good for you. That's fine. But if somebody says, I'm not sure yet, they're not necessarily saying that he stinks. I think that I'm fine being late on Mac Jones. If he ends up coming out and having a great season, taking a step forward, which I hope he does, then cool. I'll have said that he's good way later than everybody else. For now, I'm still waiting and seeing because although he definitely had the best rookie year of any of the rookie quarterbacks last year, he had really no competition outside of Davis Mills. I think that he was fine. He was okay, which for a rookie is good, but still not yet at the point where I say, okay, he's a top player in the league. And I think that by and large, most people were surprised to see him ranked 85th. Were you surprised to see him ranked 85th, Kern? No. And as far as DJ goes with this, and <laughs> I say this with all, with all love and due respect, late on Mac Jones being good, early on Tom Brady not being good, sometimes I wonder if DJ just has a thing for quarterback play under center out here in Foxborough. I mean, honestly, if Mac Jones doesn't qualify as a good player after making the Pro Bowl in his rookie year, after really being tethered to an offense that he wasn't familiar with, that he was succeeding somebody, that he was in his first year in the NFL, and to get to 9-4 and four and have the number one seed and pilot the team during that period of time, I mean, I don't know what, you're, what else you're looking for to, to stamp him as good. 85 is not over the moon praise, Phil. I would just say, first and foremost, if you've ever seen a player or a group of players fill out this survey for the top 100 from the NFL Network, you wouldn't give it a second's thought. And you certainly wouldn't give it four or five tweets. You would just sit back and just let the world burn, so to speak. <laughs> but as far as the ranking goes, I'm okay with it. It is, to me, what I said even before he was drafted was, if you got Mac Jones and he could somehow on his rookie contract elevate himself to be in the conversation with guys like Kirk Cousins, who to me is right in the middle of the pack in terms of NFL quarterbacks, that's a win. And I think he did that really in his rookie year, whether you're looking at PFF quarterback grade or ESPN's QBR or any number of other metrics, he's kind of right there in the middle of the pack in the mid-teens, 15, 16, 14, somewhere in there. So I would, I would classify that as good in 85 Seems fine to me. DJ, what? you get madder at the conversation around the player from the fan base than you do at the level of participation and play from the player. You get mad because people would make excuses for Brady. Now you're mad because people want to anoint back. It's not, it's not the player sometimes, I think. It's you get mad at the conversation. Def I, I definitely do that. And then I overcommit to the other thing. So then I actually do make jokes about him sucking, even though I obviously don't think that he sucks. You did, however, Curran, make my point off the top, which is, well, if you don't think that he's good yet, then you're just doing this. And I'm really just saying I'm cool being laid on him. And, again, if that means, okay, well, then you said that Brady was getting worse towards the end of New England, which – we all know he did play worse towards the end of New England. I said he was going to be an MVP once but he left. But why which did he I'm play wrong worse? on that, but he did win a Super Bowl, you, so a little feather in my do, cap there. Do you, though, DJ, look at him and see potential to, if not be 85, to move up the list and in a couple of years be in the 60s or the 50s and be the quarterback? Or are you sort of steadfast in thinking, like, mm, I just don't see it? I'm not steadfast in anything, and th that's why I'm a big wait-and-see person with Mac Jones because I am intrigued to see what the ceiling is. I think a reason why so many people around here were low on Mac Jones before the Patriots drafted him was how high is his actual ceiling. In big games last year, you saw the Patriots take the ball out of his hands, and maybe that's a rookie thing. Maybe that's a we don't know what we have with him yet, or maybe it's a, hey, there is a ceiling to this player. Again, I hope it's a high ceiling, and by saying I'm eager to see what the ceiling is, I am not saying he has a low ceiling, he's bad, I think he sucks. It's the, and Curran's right here, it's the reaction to that of, oh, well, then you hate him, you're a hater, you're just hating on Patriots quarterbacks. That's incorrect. I'm just willing to be late on this because I haven't seen him be that good of a quarterback yet. And I agree with Phil. If he's a middle-of-the-pack quarterback, yeah. which he roughly was last year, 
That is definitely falling in the category of so far so good. If you're getting this mired in the nuance, maybe the nuance is being lost on people to the point where you just bail on it. To me, if you look at Max ceiling, I would say he is probably a player who can guide you to multiple playoff appearances. He's not going to be a 50 touchdown guy. If he ever throws over 40, I'll be stunned. But he's going to be efficient as hell, and he's going to take it to the playoffs a few times, in my opinion. The issue for me is you can't separate. You can't divorce the quarterback from his situation, which includes his play caller. And that's the conversation that we've been having now for months is how might he be inhibited by what's going on on the sidelines in just his second year. So I think his ceiling, if Josh McDaniels was still here, we'd be talking at the end of year two, and we'd be talking about – maybe crack in the top 10 at some point in the near future. I just am not sure that's going to be this year. Curran, very quickly, you said playoffs. Does that include Super Bowl? One word answer. No. Oh, okay. 